الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واتي الله يا رسول اول الامر منكم and always a reminder for myself and abdik al-ajeezu al-da'eefu miskeen uzalim al-jahan bas Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salati wa salam ashraf al-mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi madadakum wa nadadakum Sayyid Rasul al-Kaleem bi Habib al-Azim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah inshaAllah in this blessed month of Zul Qidr and the realities that the tariqah heart opens in this month from the madad and the support of awliyaullah and the ayna and that Divinely mirror and the reflection of that mirror and our reality in approaching the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad through our good deeds and good actions and good character that our life is to busy ourselves purifying our character so that the perfection of that light can reflect its realities. And most important in the adab and understanding is that we are not opening abilities that how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, how to do that and study this reality, study that so that like a science class we can open up certain experiments and realities. This is about purification and all we have to do is like a scrub brush and busy ourselves scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. And the beauty of the mirror is that the one that you focus on already dress with these realities and reflecting them out. That for you to accomplish a drop in the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is impossible. So it's not that we have to chase after some sort of an opening. The reality of the mirror when you contemplate is that polish it and as soon as you polish it and put it into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that's why the tariqs and the way of good manners, these schools of esoteric knowledge and you don't have to know everything, you don't have to be a master in Arabic, you don't have to understand alchemy, you don't have to understand formulas, it is not the pursuit of any of that. You have to have a good scrub brush, that's it. And, and Allah provides the, the brush and the scrubbing. So we don't even have to really do other than take it. You take the testing, you take what, what Allah is sending and realize that, I need cleaning and I need to be scrubbed and as this is scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing the beautiful reality of the painful testing and painful scrubbing is the ayna, the mirror is being purified. And with the shaykh's teaching they're directing your mirror into that presence. That's why they focus on the love, the love of Allah and they taught you that that love reflected to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Otherwise if they don't teach you that you're going to take your mirror and point it where? Where's Allah? You're going to point it in which direction to get that reflection? And that's why those whom don't understand this reality they don't achieve anything. What they achieve of a kindergarten understanding of, of just Islam like understanding only the body. So imagine somebody comes to you, I have a real great understanding of the body and say, oh great congratulations, in 70 years you'll be dead and then what? You didn't understand anything from eternity? Our journey is only 60, 70, 80, 90 years here. The reality is malakut and the world of light. This Islam it's the body but what did you know from the soul of it and the turuqs that come to teach? That's why then they said focus, they put this mirror and say focus on the reality of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad 
And then busy yourself with understanding your zikrs, your madads, your, your practices. These are the scrubbing and the polishing of that mirror. And through the difficulty will come ease and through every difficulty will come ease. Means what is the ease? When the scrubbing is difficult, what happens when you take off and scrub some rust away in your life? The beatific mirror that's cleaned under the scrubbing will begin to reflect the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad The difficulty is the scrub but once you scrub something away there's a path of something clean left behind. And after the difficulty Allah promises, let this scrubbing happen, after that will be a beautific mirror that can capture and reflect the light of that reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Because Prophet is the perfect reflection of Allah's names and attributes and whatever Allah wants to be known by as and every reality that Allah wants to expose is exposed to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Not an angel, not anything else in creation can take that reflection. And that's why Allah described that, if I reveal my Holy Qur'an, just my speech, forget about Allah's reflection. If Allah says, just my speech if I reflect it onto the mountain because we think of something relevant to our, our existence. You know that the mountain, the awtad are pegs and the concept of an awt- awtad are a category of awliya because they're like pegs in which they keep the earth from shaking. One is their actual presence keeps the earth from shaking for Allah would have destroyed humanity if not for their presence on earth. Because of the, the loving light of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that they carry. And that's the concept of a, of a mountain that when Allah created the earth and it's os- os- oscillating, moving, it was rolling. Then Allah put the ferments and the mountains upon the earth as a, as a means in which to stop its shaking. So the concept of a mountain is something that, that holds a reality down from its shaking and its moving. And that's why the category of awliyaullah awtad are like pegs or like mountains that they keep from Allah's anger and qadab from destroying because their presence and that Nur Muhammad is amongst them and with them Allah says, I would not punish them while you are amongst them and that they are taught to make istighfar and ask forgiveness. So it has immense reality. Those whom don't point themselves and are not pointed by shaykhs to that reality of Sayyidina Muhammad they're not able to catch a reflection, where is Allah going to reflect to them a reality? Until the student understands their adab and they direct themselves with awliyaullah that focus on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why then their scrubbing, their teaching, all the testing that come in is polishing and polishing and polishing. Then they teach you, then make your tafakkur and your meditation because that's a, a means in which a living mirror on this earth can be in your presence. That close your eyes, concentrate and call upon these mirrors. And when you call upon the mirror and you put them in front of you, they say, this mirror of truth comes and begins to convey to you not what you want but what they want you to hear. Not what you want to hear, not the answers you wanted but what they want you to understand. And that's why it comes as a truth and that's why so few people understand it and even fewer practice it and it's the highest station that reaches into maqam al-ihsan. And they're teaching now the reverse in the last days because there's no time. 
before you had to learn all of the other realities, all your usul, all of these properties before even Shaykh Daghassani would give you bayan. That you'd have to wait and prove to him seven years of your usul and your fiqr and all of your realities, wait seven years before they would give you bayan. And that because there was time and akhir zaman was not like that. Now they're giving bayan to everybody to save them from the azab of the grave. So it's completely different reality and they're allowing these realities that were in the finishing courses that after you studied all your turuq, all of your adab, all of your characteristics and you were given your ijazahs then they would begin to teach you the tafakkur and contemplation. So it's not the beginning phase, it was the finishing phase. And this Mawlana Shaykh Nazim has written in our book that muraqabah was not the beginning but muraqabah is the ending and finishing. That's your graduation phase that when your khuluq and character was perfected and all your skills were understood and your character was, was understood then they would sit you down and begin to teach. How to connect the heart with the mirror, how to connect with the shaykhs, how to receive the fires of the shaykhs and how to open the six powers of the heart. But because of the last days and the days of difficulty they're granting permissions to be taught first. Teach them how to meditate, how to contemplate, how to stop everything, how to put the mirror in their presence because the mirrors of shaitan are too prevalent. Shaitan has grabbed everyone's eyes, grabbed everyone's ears and has completely engulfed them. Their ability to break free from that is virtually impossible. So with this ni'mat and, and ease and blessings from Allah from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is then teach them this reality. Direct them to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Teach them in their lives that they need these living mirrors. Find one and understand how your heart has to be connected to that. Direct yourself to that mirror, meditate and contemplate that what light is being dressed by Allah and reflected from Allah to Prophet, from Prophet to all these Sahabi, Awliya, Ahlul Bayt and bouncing all the way down to you're the link on a chain. That's why the shajara and the chain of the tariqah is that your mirror is coming from where? So if somebody is not on a chain and they say, I'm a mirror, say, you're a mirror from where? Who cleaned you? So now I clean myself, say, so no thanks. We know people who work on themselves can do nothing. You need other people scrubbing you, places that are hard to reach and are very painful. You may only scrub the nice places, you say, how do I look? Yeah, it's very good, thank you. But the other one come with a very bad <laughs> scrub brush and that becomes the testing in life. So the chain and the shajara is a connection to show you about this world of mirrors. If you take out the word shaykh and substituted with mirrors. They said, from what mirror are you coming? I say, from the Naqshbandi shajara. This is my shaykh, this is my shaykh, this is my shaykh, this is my shaykh. So okay, so then you're connected to them, yeah. Now you want to authenticate your link. They say, okay if you're with those shaykhs and you're of that reality of a mirror, please authenticate your link for us. That which shaykh came and said that you are a link from us and that we uphold you, we hold you and we support you. And anybody who deals with you is connected to us and that's what they call ijazah. That they hold the permission and an ijazah from the shaykhs because they're all mirrors and they're all a part of a chain. And anybody who says they're part of a chain they say, well then who authorized your link? 
so that we know that if we lock on to you, we're locked on to the chain. We're not just locked on to a freestanding piece of metal in the middle of uh, the universe just floating away. So the importance of the unbroken chain, the importance of the ijazah that satisfies this link and this person teaching this, teaching these realities that link on to them because they are linked on to us and that this chain is supporting that one. So these are all of the reasons why the turuqs have their structure, have their discipline and have all their realities. So in every book you'll see an ijazah, that's an ijazah certifying that link that teaching you this teaching is certified and his link is connected to the shaykhs all the way to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that has nothing to do even with other links and other supports that are reaching to that one. That are from the family of Sayyidina Muhammad from Ashab al Nabi all these different realities. But for us to understand the importance of the chain, the importance of, of the ijazas and, and the verifications, then we understand who we're dealing with and how to connect with that reality, how to be dressed by that reality. The importance of, of purifying, connecting. So once we are purifying and connecting then the beatific lights of the shaykhs are dressing. So you don't have to worry about anything, you just clean, 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 busy cleaning and then they are busy reflecting. As they're reflecting they're like a moon, their job is to continuously reflect and perfect. Where you're wrong you should be emailing, not emailing that, uh, please tell me the tafsir of such and such surah and that you learned in school like you're trying to stump the shaykh. That's not the adab of tariqah, don't email questions that are from left to right have nothing to do with anything. The question is about what is your condition that you're meditating, what's the issue? Something facing in your life, what's the issue? about your emailing is about how to purify yourself and how to reach to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Not stump the shaykh with you know questions from left to right. As a result of this dialogue and connection the shaykh is like a moon for you, continuously telling you meditate, contemplate, keep connecting your heart, this understanding incorrect, this understanding continue. And then you're calibrating your, your practices with your understanding and the, com and the confirmation of your communication back and forth. If you're not getting the reply that you want most likely your question is probably not appropriate. And the answer is meditate because they're not here to take your test in life but they're here to guide you on how to seek its answers through your tafakkur and the con and your channel that Allah wants to push through for your signal. Your signal is not here by getting a, 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 a something verbally from the shaykh or written from the shaykh, your signal is in here. So they're asking you to develop your heart signal, make the heart signal to be solid so this line of communication can keep flowing. Then you keep calibrating by your emails that, I'm experiencing this, should I continue with that? Should I do like this or do like that? And then you calibrate your coordinates and your understanding inshaAllah and then that is being sent in to higher shaykhs. As you're purifying then the greater shaykhs are dressing and then dressing and preparing, Ahlul Bayt are preparing, Ashab al Nabi are preparing and dressing and presenting to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>